This is the question from October November 2016, question 4. Diet nitric acid behaves as a typical acid in some reactions but not in other reactions. Question A. Dilute nitric acid behaves as a typical acid when reacted with copper oxide and with copper carbonate. Describe what you would see if excess dilute nitric acid is added separately to solid samples of copper carbonate and copper oxide by warming the mixtures. Now remember whenever they ask you to describe what you see, it means they want the observation. And if observation is required in your question, the first thing that you need to do is always write down your chemical equation for the reaction taking place. So as for copper carbonate, it would look like this. And as for copper oxide, now of course it is not necessary for you to write the chemical equation as they did not ask you that. But the reason I'm writing this is so that it would be easier for us to see our product. And based on our product, we can determine and describe what is our observation. So as you can see for copper carbonate, there will be carbon dioxide being produced. Since carbon dioxide is a gas, this means that you will be able to see bubbles or effervescence. And the same goes to copper oxide, you have carbon dioxide as well. Since the question is giving you four marks, you need to give another one observation for both your copper carbonate and copper oxide. So as you can see, what is being mentioned here is that you are adding the nitric acid to a solid sample. So what happens usually is that if you have a solid sample, placed inside a beaker and you are pouring acid on top of it, in this case nitric acid, this acid will be able to dissolve this solid completely. So what you will be observing is that this solid sample will disappear and the same would happen for copper oxide as well. There is another observation for copper oxide. Since copper oxide is a black powder and then it forms copper nitrate over here, Copper nitrate consists of Cu2+. If it consists of Cu2+, this means the solution that is being formed would be blue in color as copper 2 ion are blue in color. And copper carbonate is blue and it remains blue for copper carbonate uh, situation over there. Question B. When dilute nitric acid is added to pieces of copper and heated, a reaction takes place and copper nitrate is formed. Part of the chemical equation for the reaction between copper and dilute nitric acid is shown. They want you to complete the equation by inserting the formula and balancing the equation. So now copper reacting with nitric acid would give you copper nitrate. So this is what it would look like. Now your job is just to balance it. So I'm going to start by balancing the oxygen number as that's the biggest number over here. So as you can see, three oxygens over here and there are 8 that means 8 times 3 oxygen giving you a total of 24 oxygens over here you have got 4 oxygen and 2 oxygen here giving you a total of 6 oxygens and here you have 24 so you will need 18 oxygens here to make it balance you already have 6 oxygen over here since there are 3 and outside 2 times 2 6 this means that in order to make it 18 you need to put a tree in front of here. Now this will give you 18 oxygens, 3 copper meaning 3 copper here as well. Now let's check if other elements are balanced here. We have got 8H and 8H as well. We have got 8 nitrogen here, 2 nitrogen and 6 nitrogen over here. This means that a total of 8 nitrogen and 8, this is balanced, hydrogen is balanced, Oxygen is balanced with 24 oxygens on each side and 3 copper on each side as well. So this would be your final answer, putting 3 in front of copper and 3 in front of copper nitrate. Last question, how is the reaction of dilute nitric acid with copper different from that of a typical metal with a typical acid? Now an example of typical metal that we can use could be sodium. So if sodium reacts with dilute nitric acid, what you will get is sodium nitrate and hydrogen gas. However, when you react copper with nitric acid, as you can see over here, the product that you get is water and nitrogen oxide. So this is the difference that you will be able to observe when you use copper instead of a typical metal giving you hydrogen gas. This is the question from May, June 2019, question 4. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid and hydrochloric acid is a strong acid. Both ethanoic acid and hydrochloric acid dissociates in aqueous solution. Now question A, define the term acid. 
Now, this is the standard answer that you have to remember when they ask you to define the term acid. Acid is a proton donor and this is quite a typical or a famous question that will be asked in this chapter. Question 2, the chemical equation shows the changes which occur when the strong acid hydrochloric acid is added to water. So as you can see here, hydrochloric acid dissociates to form hydrogen ion and chlorine ion. Complete the chemical equation to show the changes which occur when the weak acid ethanoic acid is added to water. So the same thing happens, you would get hydrogen ion and the rest of it would be your anion. So this is what you would see. However, please do not forget to write your state whereby this both will be in aqueous. Question B. A student does experiments to show that hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and ethanoic acid is a weak acid. Student adds an excess of HCl and an excess of ethanoic acid to separate lumps of calcium carbonate. So only the identity of the acid is changed between the experiment. All other conditions are kept the same. For example, the temperature, the amount of acid being used especially, and the concentration of acid should be the same as well. Question 1. State two observations which would show that hydrochloric acid is a stronger acid than ethanoic acid. So as I mentioned before previously, when it comes to observation, always write down your chemical equation. So you will have the same amount of lumps for calcium carbonate and you will pour the same amount of acid, for example, 100 milliliter of HCl and also 100 milliliter of ethanoic acid. So what happens similar with the previous question, when you pour the acid into a solid sample, this solid will disappear to dissolve in your acid. However, the difference between HCl and ethanoic acid is that HCl is a strong acid and ethanoic is a weak acid. So the time taken for this acid to be able to dissolve your lumps would be the difference. So the first observation that you could say is solid dissolves quicker in HCl. And again, if a solid dissolves, what happens is that you would observe bubbles of fizzing. In another word, you call that effervescence. So the difference between HCl and ethanoic acid is that faster rate of fizzing that occurs in HCl or in another word, you could say that more effervescence is being observed in HCl. The last question, the student uses the same size container and checks that the pressure is the same for each experiment. State three other conditions which must be kept the same to ensure fair testing. So as I mentioned before, you need to use the same concentration of acid and also the same amount of acid to make sure the test is fair. Another condition which should be kept the same is the temperature of this solution or acid. You could also have other answers such as the amount that you use for your calcium carbonate solid sample should also be the same for both your HCl and ethanoic acid. So this is the question from May June 2019, question 5D. A student prepares crystal of magnesium chloride by adding an excess of magnesium carbonate to hydrochloric acid. So before we solve this question, let's write down the chemical equation to see what exactly happened in this reaction. So as you can see here, they're saying that this is the crystal that you are forming by adding an excess of magnesium carbonate. This is excess and 50 centimeter cube of two mole hydrochloride acid this is the information given for your acid the student filters the mixture and rinses the residue if you refer to the notes that I have uploaded there is also a picture like this that you will find in chapter 8 shows you the difference between filter versus residue so now what happens is after you have mixed your hydrochloric acid with magnesium carbonate you will filter the solution in your filter funnel and the filtrate will go here so this filtrate will be your MgCl2 and whatever left here would be your residues. So your magnesium chloride would be your filtrate and residue will be the one that is left inside your filter funnel or your filter paper. Question 1. Why does the student add an excess of magnesium carbonate? Usually we add an excess of our solid sample to ensure that it reacts completely with all the acid or to make sure all the acid is completely being used up. So the next question is asking you, why does the student rinse the residue? Usually the residue is being rinsed or washed to ensure that all the filtrate is being removed, all the filtrate goes through your filter funnel. Question 3, describe how the student would obtain pure crystals of magnesium chloride from the filtrate. So as you can see, this filtrate is in a solution form. 
So the first thing you need to do is evaporate it to ensure that all the water is being removed. After you have removed all the water, now you would have a very concentrated filtrate of magnesium chloride. So what you should do next is you leave the filtrate to crystallize. After they have crystallized, the last step would be to dry your sample. I would strongly advise you or suggest you to memorize these three steps on how to obtain pure crystals as this is a common question that will be asked in a chapter of acid, base and salt. Question E. Silver chloride is insoluble. It can be made by a precipitation reaction between aqueous barium chloride and a suitable aqueous silver salt. Aqueous silver salt here meaning that it could be anything that is combined with silver, silver nitrate, silver sulfate, anything. The first question is asking you what is meant by the term precipitate. Precipitate is a solid which forms when two solutions are reacted together. Question 2. Name a suitable silver salt, this one, to use to prepare silver chloride. So if you want to prepare silver chloride, this means that you need to have chloride ion and silver ion. Complete the chemical equation to show the formation of insoluble silver chloride from aqueous barium chloride and the silver salt that you have named. So in order for us to form an insoluble salt, what you need to do is react two soluble salts together. So if you refer to the notes that I have uploaded, you would see that in order for you to make a precipitate, you need double decomposition. And double decomposition means, means that two soluble salts react together to form an insoluble salt. So we already have barium chloride, one of the salt, and we need another silver. So as you can see here, all nitrates are soluble. So if you put silver nitrate, this would be an example of a soluble salt that you can use to make a precipitate. So I'm going to use silver nitrate over here and they already mentioned what salt you would be formed which is silver chloride. Now this is silver chloride so you already have silver and chloride reacting with each other giving you another salt of barium nitrate. So this would be your answer. Now please check to see if this chemical equation is balanced. So you have got two nitrates here. You have to put two over here. So if you have two silver here, two over here, you have two chloride and two chloride here. One barium and one barium here as well. So yes, now your equation is balanced and you will be able to achieve a complete of three marks. So now your equation is balanced and the suitable silver salt that is being used here is called silver nitrate. This is the question from May, June 2020, question 4. This question is about reactions of bases and acid. Ammonia is a gas at room temperature. What is the test for ammonia gas? Describe the positive result of this test. Now if you refer to the notes that I have uploaded, I have listed down all the flame tests, tests for gases, and ion tests and cations tests. So for gases, for ammonia, you will be able to find it on this table. The test that you would perform is put a damp litmus paper and the result is that the red litmus paper would turn blue. Question B. Ammonia reacts with water to form ions. How does this equation show that ammonia behaves as a base? So as you can see here, a base means that it is a proton acceptor. Question 2. Aqueous ammonia is described as a weak base. Since this is a weak base, this one is neutral and this one is a strong alkali or strong base. You can choose a pH value between these four range as a weak base. So I'm just going to put a 9 over here. Next, describe what is seen when aqueous ammonia is added to aqueous copper sulfate until no further change is seen. Again, if they're asking you what is seen, please always write down your chemical equation to understand what is happening in this reaction. So as you can see here, this would be your aqueous ammonia being added to aqueous copper sulfate. So you would get copper hydroxide and ammonium sulfate. So they want you to see what is seen, three marks. So you need to give three different types of observation. Now copper sulfate is a blue solution. The reason is because it contains copper 2 ion. And as you can see, this one also contains copper 2 ion, which means that it will also be blue. So the first observation that you could say is your blue solution remains unchanged. So the next observation that you could state is that since this is a precipitate and it is blue in color, you can say that blue precipitate is formed. Since they're saying until no further change is seen, after a while your blue precipitate or your precipitate would start to dissolve. 
so that is something that you could mention as well so you will be able to get three marks over here now just please be reminded do not write your answer in point form like this instead please write your answer continuously in a paragraph as that is the format of answering for IGCSC it says that aqueous sodium hydroxide is a strong alkali that reacts with dilute sulfuric acid exothermically exothermic means this reaction releases heat they're asking you to name what type of reaction is this so if an alkali reacts with acid this means that this process is a neutralization process next question complete the equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid so what happens is that your sodium ion will combine with your sulfate ion to form sodium sulfate giving you Na2SO4 and H plus would react with hydroxide to give you water H2O. Now please check to see if your reaction is balanced. You've got 2 Na here and 2 Na here, 1 SO4, 1 SO4, 2 H and 1 oxygen here. So yes, your equation is balanced. Next question. A student wanted to find the concentration so this question is not related to this chapter and i have covered this question in our previous videos 